You are on Strat News Global. I am Nitin Gokhale. Today with me is a special guest, uh, Air Marshal P K Roy, former uh, Commander in Chief of the Andaman and Nicobar Command, uh, based in Port Blair, uh, and of course uh, earlier the Commandant of the National Defence College, very experienced uh, Air Force officer who also has worked in tri-service organisations uh, like NDC and uh, of course uh, the Andaman and Nicobar Command. But uh, before I come and turn to him, uh, there are some updates uh, that I want to share uh, here uh, about the uh, significant development that has taken place uh, in the uh, Indian Ocean region, where uh, a U.S. Uh, carrier battle group uh, led by uh, U.S.S. Nimitz, a super uh, aircraft carrier of the United States Navy, is currently passing through what is called a six-degree channel. Uh, which is south of uh, the Indira point uh, in um, the uh, the end point of the Andaman Nicobar uh, chain of islands between Indira point and uh, Indonesia the 6 degree channel uh, passes one of the major uh, uh, passage for uh, international shipping and USS Nimitz is uh, currently passing through that they are uh, uh, being joined uh, since this morning on monday morning by four frontline Indian naval ships of the Eastern Naval Command uh, since uh, this morning. And they will be uh, operating or uh, traveling or uh, passing together uh, in that area of Indian Ocean uh, from uh, this morning on Monday morning till about Tuesday evening. Uh, that's more than 24 hours. Uh, the PASEX, it's called that exercise is called uh, PASEX or uh, passing exercise when uh, ships of a certain Navy are going through the area, uh, the Indian Navy joins them and uh, operates with them uh, to, to a certain period and certain distance. And then uh, they, both navies, uh, understand each other's way of operating, uh, what is called interoperability. And uh, that's how uh, this uh, Pathex takes place. Last week uh, or about uh, end of June, uh, India had done a similar exercise with the Japanese Navy. So, uh, a great signal is being sent uh, to China, I would think, uh, by uh, doing these specific exercises uh, where uh, elements of Quad uh, uh, nations, uh, that is United States, Japan, India and Australia are coming together. Now, uh, this exercise itself uh, is significant because the USS Nimitz uh, was uh, on a deployment in the South China Sea. Uh, it has finished that and is now headed to Western Indian Ocean. Uh, has come out of the Malacca Straits and is in the Indian Ocean right now as we speak. Uh, and they have been joined, as I said, by four uh, frontline Indian ships. And the ships include um, you know, uh, destroyers, frigates and corvettes. Their names are INS Sanyadri, INS Shivalek, INS Kamorta and INS Rana. These four ships, uh, which belong to the Eastern Naval Command, uh, have uh, joined uh, the PASIX exercise with uh, USS Nimitz and the other ships uh, in that carrier battle group. Uh, the Eastern Naval Fleet, uh, if uh, if you missed the earlier update, uh, had completed an exercise in the Andaman Sea last week uh, in a signal uh, which was uh, designed to uh, pass a message to uh, China that uh, the Indian Navy uh, is um, well poised and uh, well within the reach to get to uh, Malacca Straits when required. In any case, there is one uh, ship of the Indian Navy always stationed at the Malacca, the western mouth or the western edge of the Malacca Straits. Apart from the P-8 uh, reconnaissance uh, planes and anti-submarine warfare planes which are flying in that area uh, constantly. Now, uh, this is, a, uh, this is uh, important because this is an important signal uh, to China amidst the tension that is happening on the northern frontiers. Uh, the uh, PASEX uh, as I see it, uh, as we see it, is a major signal to China in the context of the current tension uh, on the along the line of actual control in Ladakh and elsewhere. Uh, the uh, Chinese vulnerability, as all strategic experts agree, uh, is uh, in the oceans, especially in the Malacca Straits called the Malacca uh, Dilemma, because uh, China's uh, exports and imports, as well as its energy dependence uh, through uh, the Malacca Straits is well known and uh, it's a weakness that China has. That said, uh, I think uh, the Indian Navy's uh, Eastern fleet uh, con con uh, consistently and constantly 
passes through uh, the Andaman seas and then uh, after the Bay of Bengal passage goes to uh, uh, the Southeast Asian regions, uh, which uh, is uh, something that uh, the Chinese know. And this is a significant step, as I said, to have a PASEX and publicly announce it uh, uh, with uh, the United States Navy and especially its uh, super carrier, aircraft carrier USS Nimitz. That said, let me return to my guest, Air Marshal P.K. Roy, uh, who has joined us from Bangalore um, because of the COVID situation. He's been stuck there for the last uh, four months. Welcome, Air Marshal Roy. Uh, Thank you. Always Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, you commanded the uh, Andaman Nicobar Command, uh, I think, between uh, 2012 and 2014. Uh, please tell us a little bit about, to our viewers, the importance of the Andaman Nicobar Command Andaman Nicobar Command as well as the Andaman Nicobar uh, chain of islands. Uh, thank, thank you, Nitin. But uh, before that, I would like to say how happy I am today that uh, such an exercise is being done. And like you rightly said, it is being announced also that we are doing it. Okay, a significant move. Uh, these islands have been neglected for uh, way too long. So, uh, if you remember, we almost lost them during the partition. Okay. Uh, the Britishers were planning to keep it to, with them and settle the Anglo Burmese there. The Pakis had demanded it for transit route, transit point for East Pakistan to West Pakistan. Even the Australians had demanded, and we were blissfully ignorant of what was happening. <laughs> so I'm extremely happy that we have realized the importance. And uh, geographically also, look if you look at it, the strategic importance of the geography is extremely important. Unfortunately, even though everybody knows about it, we have been looking at our geography in the north and the west only, and right. not towards Southeast Asia. Okay, yeah. so extremely important that uh, this exercise is taking place, and we are announcing it, like you said. Uh, coming to the basic. Uh, about the Andaman Nicobar Islands, I am sure many of your viewers know these are a chain of 572 islands spread across 750 kilometers north to south and uh, located almost 1200 kilometers east of our eastern uh, coast. They are closer to the Southeast Asian uh, countries than the uh, our east coast. Uh, 572 islands is, uh, gives a little different uh, this thing, connotation. Many of these islands are very, very small and maybe rocks or atolls, but then they are uh, significant. Even these rocks are important in today's environment. Look what is happening in uh, uh, South China uh, Sea. These islands uh, sit astride the main sea lines of communication of the 21st century, right. where tremendous amount of competition and contestation is uh, taking place. And right. the two channels, 10 and 6 degree channels feed you into the Malacca Strait, which you explained the Malacca Dilemma, which is located just about 80 nautical miles from the Great Nicobar Islands, the southernmost uh, island of ours. Exactly. That is the significant uh, significance of these islands, just about 80 uh, nautical miles. Correct. Uh, the Andaman Nicobar Command was established in 2001 and uh, you were there as uh, the Commander-in-Chief in, uh, between 2012 and 2014. Uh, there was initially, there was some neglect of the command itself. Uh, but tell us, uh, what uh, uh, what is the military significance of these islands? Uh, I mean, we have spoken about the Malacca Dilemma, of course. But what can these islands bring to the table uh, if... Uh, there is a hot war or if there is a um, continuous tension uh, with China uh, as far as India is concerned. Uh, if you go a little back, in the earlier days, whenever you spoke of threat to the islands or threat in the area, we always spoke of non-conventional threats. Right. Okay. We spoke of smuggling. We spoke of poaching. We spoke of marine poaching, forest poaching. We spoke of drug peddling. We never spoke in terms of military threat. That's right. Okay. Slowly it has come into the picture and slowly we have started looking at it. And of course, Kargil in 2001, uh, after the recommendations of the group of ministers, Andaman Nicobar was raised on 8th October 2001. Great matches. Same date <laughs> as the Air Force raising day. I am from Air Force. So I must yeah. say that. Exactly. So uh, it was raised. 
uh, the role of the command is all encompassing defense of Andaman Nicobar Islands. It's was waters, it's coastlines, it's airspace, the land, everything has to, is the responsibility of Andaman Nicobar and a huge task. Right. Do we have the resources? We can talk about it later. Mm -hmm. And uh, a particular type of structure was provided to it, the command. Right. And I would, after two years' experience, I would say the structure is excellent. Right. There's nothing wrong in the structure provided with Sinkan and Top with his chief of staff and the four component commanders from four command. The fourth is, of course, the uh, Coast Guard. In fact, that is something that I want to ask you. I think this is the only, uh, actually, it should be called uh, a four service command rather than tri service yeah. command. Because Coast Guard is the one which is integrated, uh, uh, inherently integrated in the Andaman Nicobar Command. Unfortunately, we keep saying tri. It is actually a joint command or a unified command. Unified. Command. Ideal word is it's a unified command. So the force structure is, but the problem or the issue I would say is in the implementation of the policies. Correct. You see, the, the, command, the problem doesn't lie in ANC. The problem used to. It is changing over a period. The problem, yes. main problem used to be that these component commanders were controlled directly by the service set, their respective service headquarters. Of course, yes. yeah. And they would always bypass the CNC because they were directly controlled. So right. that was one of the uh, major issue. Then prioritization of the force level. Even though at the beginning itself, the force levels were planned, the prioritization of force level to be deployed was with the individual service headquarters. Mm. That and resource it. crunch, resource crunch dictated the services keeping the uh, resources on the main line. And that the main line to the Nicobar command, yeah. Andaman Nicobar command. So that was, and every time the uh, reply used to be, don't worry, we will come when the need comes. But fortunately, again, I would say these issues that have come up now have highlighted the importance. And uh, in the last five to six years, this government has really taken uh, proactive steps right. in not only in not only building the infrastructure, bringing out the importance of it, both economically as well as uh, uh, militarily. Tremendous actions have been taken, but there are major issues here. Yes, I'll, issues. First, I'll first update uh, our viewers about what the plans are, and then we'll talk about the implementation mm -hmm. part. So, uh, from what we know, uh, the uh, the plans are to improve tourism and connectivity with Southeast Asia uh, because it's so close to uh, uh, the Southeast Asian uh, countries. There is a plan to upgrade four airfields uh, from Diglipur in the north to Campbell Bay in the south uh, by upgrading the uh, four airfields. The runways are being extended from existing 1000 meters to about 3000 meters. That's the plan. I'm not talking uh, uh, saying that they are, they are uh, being uh, already implemented or already up and running, but uh, this is the plan. There is also a transshipment hub planned at Campbell Bay, uh, which is less than 100, 100 kilometers from uh, Malacca Straits and uh, likely to uh, be sort of uh, an alternative uh, to a transshipment that happens in Colombo in Sri Lanka. Several jetties on both eastern and western coasts are being upgraded to receive maritime traffic. And uh, optic fiber connectivity has more or less been completed to smaller islands like Havelock and Neil, uh, which uh, gives better telecom uh, connectivity uh, to these smaller islands from Port Blair, at least, if not from the mainland itself. Uh, so you would know these places uh, very well. So uh, you were talking about some of the implementation issues, if you can highlight that. Emotional, right? There is a huge gap between what you want and what can be done. <laughs> Correct. This gap needs to be filled up. Right. And uh, for that, to understand this, we must understand the issues that comes up there. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, the infrastructure development is a major, major problem there. Okay. As I told you, these islands are small islands dispersed, no way connected with it. The only connection is through the sea. So, and 85 to 86 percent of the land is a forest area. So there are issues of environmental issues comes in, the CRZ issues comes in, 
there are issues of not having enough construction material there everything has to be either brought in from the mainland india or uh, from the neighboring countries now these small islands when you want to develop you have to first make the bigger jetties because the ships which comes with material have to bring these materials onto the jetties and then they have to be uh, shifted to the sites there are lack of contractors there there is lack of labor there unfortunately what has happened is over a period the labor which has come from bengal and other places have not gone back and settled there as it's done which has changed the demography quite a bit uh, in that area then uh, nobody will try and bring the heavy equipment there just for one contract so that needs to be uh, looked into the restricted availability of the island administration including the military administration to take on large scale uh, construction uh, simultaneously is a major problem in my time i remember there was only one a class contractor right mm -hmm. and he used to be moving from down south to the north uh, northern islands and all contracts would go to him same labor would be shifted from a to b b to c so we need to can be done we are doing it in the north we are similar working season is restricted for to about 5 to 6 months because of monsoons and all these problems exist in our northern uh, uh, border also yeah, yeah. you look at lot of ladakh northeast area if we can do there a similar actions need to be taken here to build the infrastructure both military and economics correct now uh, you actually you have served from uh, thais uh, in ladakh uh, if i remember correctly right down to andamans and uh, one of our uh, issues with china has been that uh, our infrastructure along the frontiers be it the maritime frontier or the uh, land frontier uh, was not keeping pace at all there was no plan there was no implementation of those plans if they were so therefore uh, things have changed as you also yourself mentioned but a uh, couple of the other things that uh, these islands bring to the table and which i want your views on is one of course that it gives india the flexibility of projecting power uh, by having um, some of the fighter jets uh, stationed in uh, andaman nicobar uh, islands and uh, where would they be and which kind of aircraft uh, would uh, normally be there we hear there are half a half a squadron of uh, jaguars have now been based have been brought into uh, the uh, islands Uh, what kind of capability they would bring see basically jaguars have been coming there but of late they have been coming uh, with law gaps because of the issue of the runway in uh, karnikobar if you look at the karnik island uh, it was constructed by the japanese in during the world war 2 indian air force took over in sometime in 1956 then uh, uh, fortan came up and thereafter of course slowly anc has come up but the issue is post tsunami of 2004 december 2000 26 december 2004 the entire island chain has moved around 2 to 3 to 4 meters towards the mainland and has tilted the uh, karnik and the great nicobar islands have gone down by 2 to 3 meters and the northern islands have come up this has created tremendous problem in karnik which is a flat absolutely flat island A lot of waters has gushed in. We have lost out coastline, which is close to the uh, airfield. During high tide, the water comes onto the dumbbell, and you have to keep pumping it out. There are standard pumps, huge pumps positioned there. So these runways have to be resurfaced. They will have to be raised because the island has gone in, and the water is seeping in quite badly. so what but, is the solution there uh, i mean is there a solution to that kind of a thing but now now that the jaguars are there obviously some improvements would have taken place no patch work is going on but there is a project there is a huge project which started uh, well before i went there uh, for, but unfortunately it is getting delayed in sanctioning because every time there is things are being added to it uh, uh, use of local material can, is not possible because they have been washed with the oceanic water and they have we come back the entire parallel taxi track has become disusable and uh, the runway has to be raised one end of the runway has to be raised by around 1.6 odd meters 
oh. at full length of runway if you notice so it's a huge task bending for sanction from 235 it has gone to about 1000 crores now uh, but it has to be done there is no choice uh, for that a jetty a proper jetty to get ships of that size with material has to be constructed and i am sure now that uh, government is giving this important it will be done till then patch repairs should continue and the jaguars are operating there every few years as i said during my tenure they must keep coming and, and keep practicing otherwise you lose out on the trained uh, manpower to fly from that area and that must come down the chain to the young pilots all the time and uh, these are the maritime jaguars which come all the way from our western coast and uh, operate there fly quite a bit during that time and uh, we so they, bring in a lot of they bring in enough capability their range would be uh, quite a bit going right uh, deep into southeast asia absolutely absolutely they bring in tremendous amount of capability and with the uh, with the new types of uh, transport aircraft c130 c17 that have their movement is quite fast Mm -hmm. you know the air to air refuel in the from jamnagar come across land at uh, karnikapar and these heavy lift uh, aircraft bring the support services and the manpower so it can be made operationally much much faster than what it was uh, in the good old days yes in fact uh, as we are speaking uh, i'll just take one question there is one question from a viewer rishikesh uh, as you can see kurekar uh, interesting question will andaman nikobar uh, become uh, head, uh, the uh, headquarter of the quad uh, military component <laughs> why, <laughs> so, why 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 do you need andamans to be headquarter of quad uh, i don't need, you have to tell you have to tell the viewer but uh, what is your view if he is asked him uh, asked out of the blue this question but uh, still what would be uh, your view on that uh, an exercise like that requires tremendous amount of planning Right. and large number of resources which are not available with the andaman nicobar command so it must be done centrally at right. the naval headquarters with the ministry of defense because there are political angles to it there are diplomatic angles to it there are various angles to uh, planning this squad so a command isolated far away planning it on their own with various countries may not be <laughs> but then it, it, it shows interest Yes, but although you did, uh, you do in Andaman, you do the Milan exercise um, quite a bit uh, every year in February. You do Milan, I mean, every second year uh, the second exercise year. exercise Milan is done uh, in Andaman. So that way, uh, that um, tradition is there uh, of other navies coming in, bringing in their ships uh, to Andaman, right? Yeah, there are there are in my time fifteen countries that come. Two thousand fourteen, we we conducted it, and there was one more after that in sixteen. Uh, and right. the last one was unfortunately had to be cancelled uh, right. so uh, almost 15 countries come but restricted most of them are representatives like uh, from african countries a ship coming all the way for a milan exercise they don't consider it uh, to pull but they do send their representative to participate right. in the seminars to participate in the table top exercises and various even from new zealand they uh, come so uh, it's it's a good it's one of the best exercises that we have and it must ex expand i would see i feel right so i was uh, as we come towards the end of the program just one uh, quick question for the future uh, you know the uh, exercise malabar uh, which is right now trilateral between india japan uh, unless of course you have something else to add apart from the question that i'm going to ask uh, the trilateral that happens between india japan and uh, united states the navies Uh, will soon likely to have Australia joining in that exercise. Uh, so, uh, would uh, exercise Malabar off the coast of um, Andaman uh, Nicobar Islands uh, in the Andaman Seas uh, send out a strong signal, or maybe even in uh, six degree channel, uh, if the exercise happens, uh, would that be a very strong signal uh, to China that uh, it cannot take uh, the passage uh, or uh, the uh, Uh, its uh, plans to come to indian ocean uh, for granted really no, these exercises are meant for that purpose what interoperability and various other things are the norms to learn with the, from each other's experience develop interoperability they all are good but they also send tremendous amount of message very very strong messages 
and if it is done in and the andaman sea it will send extremely strong messages which is very important and i hope it is done in that uh, in that sea i remember when the malaysian airline uh, aircraft was missing i was the ofc uh, chinese would find reasons to come into the andaman sea to locate the aircraft. and we would diplomatically stop them from they would find some reason or the other to send their ships into the andaman sea right so that is they were trying to send if they had reached there they were trying to send a message right so such exercises and such cooperative exercises are extremely important for sending messages also so and the location of the exercise it does matter exactly so i think that's a strong message that you have given and uh, with your experience uh, unless you have something to add i'm going to end this program here because uh, that's uh, something that we have discussed uh, of great significance and uh, you've given us great insights about what uh, anc brings uh, to the table and what it can uh, do not just for military but also for uh, our civilian uh, counterparts uh, which are sitting there along the uh, entire island chain uh, i think um, uh, we will end this program here and uh, we will uh, come back and uh, draw upon your experience uh, whenever we have uh, such an occasion thank you very much for joining and thank you viewers uh, for joining us in such great numbers thank you thank you for having me thank you